What up, meatheads? This is Travis, American Butcher, with the special holiday episode, or Christmas episode, of the Meat Block Podcast. I just want to welcome you. Let me just pause. This party that I'm in the middle of, as you could hear, there's Jingle Bell Rock happening. There, It's like a uh, Home Alone scene. I have Michael Jordan on a on a train track going around, but not really, actually. It's just me, and this is my phone playing in the background. I'll pause it, and Milo is rarely sleeping because I'm recording this Christmas Eve during the day. And if you didn't know, Milo sleeps during the day and harasses me at night. A lot of exciting stuff happening over here in the specific Northwest, because it's specifically over there. We had a huge windstorm, a couple houses down. Uh, got hit pretty hard. I think their break walls uh, ended up not working out so well. But luckily here at the home front, this hundred year old fortress I live in stood strong against the 70 mile an hour winds. Good cutting enhances the quality. And I was just interrupted by the intro because I didn't put that track on mute. Piece of meat, regardless of quality. So we had this huge windstorm. And it was crazy. There was, you know, where I live, I live at the, on the edge of the sound, or actually live on the sound. But it's usually fairly calm. Like right now, it's water ski like conditions. And it's a beautiful day. And I should actually be on the water crack, catching some crabs, but it's a lot of work and it's very cold. There was frost on my windshield this morning, but we had like, it, it was weird events. It was a 13 foot tide that just kept on coming with one of the strongest windstorms we've had in several years. That combined with the tide being at peak tide, it was pushing swells. You know, the the swells were about five feet. Surf surge was about, you know, an additional two feet on top of that. And, yeah, we had waves breaking on the, on the bulkhead and the break wall. And luckily... Uh, I just got to clean my windows because they're covered in salt. But some of my neighbors got hit pretty hard. And, you know, some places got flooded and totaled out. But we're good. Not, nothing. I lost all my Presto starter logs. That is the thing. I was storing them in a place. And they ended up getting wet. Now I got a set of logs. I have Presto starter dust. So I already did the intro of this holiday edition of the meat block podcast while you're sitting around with your family or you could be itching to leave i used to tend bar and bounce when i was in my younger fitter days and our busiest time of the year was thanksgiving day and christmas eve and christmas day that's because people who come back into town visiting love their families. But they also want to be with the people they grew up with or that they missed. And some of them may just want an escape. So after hanging out with their families, they go to the local watering hole and tell stories of grandeur of the last time they were at their local watering hole. Because it is the season to drink and be merry, and to find merry and be drunk. And the reason we celebrate such holidays is right after the winter solstice, the longest day of the year is when winter is trying to kill you, and the day before the solstice is when that windstorm ravaged through the Pacific Northwest. And now we have our feast and we celebrate because we have survived the longest days of the winter. We have survived the elements. I had stood in the wind's face and laughed, and I am still here. So I will get together with my family and feast ourselves, usually on a prime rib. I know it's 
prime rib on Christmas makes me a basic bitch. But it is tradition and I do love it. We'll also be having a ham. Tonight we're going to go over to one set of in-laws house and regale and tell stories. Come home and Harrison will open up his Christmas gifts from us. Then he'll go to bed. And in the sleeping hours, a stranger will sneak into our house who voyeuristically watches over my children or child. Leaves presents. And he will open those ones in the morning. That's how my family did it. That's how my brother family continues to do it. And it's again with these traditions. So in this episode, I wanted to know what you, the listener, were up to. And interesting things about your holidays, traditions, and stories. So using the online network that I have through social media and Instagram, I asked what people were having for Christmas dinner. And here are some of the responses I got. Prime rib export. That sounds great. A lot of people out there are having prime rib. One thing I didn't realize is that prime rib, yes, as a identifier of a cut, some places label like a prime rib ribeye steak as the prime rib being the bone-in cut name, which I find can be deceiving. Someone said, a tofu shaped into a rib roast. My response to that is just very simple. Are you going to have disappointment for dessert? Other people are having beef wellington. Now, I do love a good beef wellington. And when I worked retail, we would make these things for customers. And it was very difficult to make a beef wellington that was ready for the consumer to just heat up. Because they often messed it up. One person blah, one person responded and said they're having tamales. I love tamales. I remember when I was living in Southern California, where I'm from, I bought tamales from a person off the street. And he gave me some. And I came back, or I didn't come back, I ate them. And there was bones in it. And I was like, ugh, this is weird. And I didn't realize that is the traditional way that some people make it. So I was told maybe they were just telling me that because they wanted me to eat bones. Friend of the show, Erica, said she's having a Cuban roast or Cuban roasted pork, but no cajachina. People are saying beef, that's what's for dinner every night, prime rib. Someone says a turkey with Spanish ricotta, sun-dried tomatoes with rosemary stuffing. That sounds great. Someone replied that they're having hot dogs to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And I feel like nothing is more appropriate than tube steak for such an event. Prime rib with Brussels sprouts and fingerly potatoes. And then they asked, what am I having? Thanks for asking about me. I'm having prime rib and ham and probably some other things that I was told, but I forgot because I don't pay attention to details. And I like being genuinely surprised. And I think my mind is slipping because of the years of abuse I did when I was younger. I often find myself in the room and forgetting why I went in there in the first place. Move my eyes back and forth trying to trigger, loose a memory to explain why I'm in the prediction I'm in. Good thing most of my cutting is muscle memory. Someone replied, prime rib this year and every year. Someone replied, roasted whitetail deer with wild leeks. Prime rib 
duh, is a response I got. Prime rib cold smoked and or cold smoked and then oven roasted. That sounds pretty good. Clark Griswold is having gravy and meatballs and baked CD. Sounds like you're it's a mixture of Greek and Swiss. Ham. Ham. Ham, turkey, carrots, fresh brains, Brussels sprouts, mashed and roasted potatoes. Two types of potatoes. Potatoes. Gravy meat balls, as someone says. Some cut of lamb I'll cut up tomorrow. I like living at the seam of your pants on that one, not knowing exactly what you're going to have. Moving on. This is the time of year when we celebrate. And some of the best ways to celebrate is to buy tangible, tangible physical items for our loved ones, the ones we care about. And other times we buy these items for our coworkers. The ones that we're not necessarily forced to be with every day, but ones where, you know, you don't need to put the thought and the care and the love and the meaning behind a traditional gift you would give for someone that, say, you live with or that you're related to. But with such games as Yankee Swap, Dice Game, White Elephant, and other various Secret Santa versions of this game that allow amenuity in the gift giving or anonymity. That with the childlike immaturity of people in the meat industry, or that can be found in people in the meat industry. It allows for some pretty wild takes and inappropriate jokes and gifts. My first year working in this industry, we had a company party where we did a secret Santa gift, where we drew a name out of the hat and had to buy that person something with a budget of $20 or less. I think the budget now should be $30. That's just me. I don't remember what I gave that year, nor do I remember what I received. That's not important to this story, and it didn't stand out to form this memory. But what I do remember is some colorful gifts exchanged around that company table in the break room the day before Christmas break. December of some years ago. With a $20 limit, I remember that someone received a gift card for $10 to McDonald's. I remember thinking to myself, well, that's... uh, Disappointing? You think the gift certificate would be for the full amount of $20 or the equivalent of like when you buy gift certificates at Costco during certain times of the year when you can get like a $30 gift certificate for $20. But no, it was a $10 gift certificate with a max budget of $20. Hopefully they weren't expecting to supersize their meal. The next gift I remember someone receiving was a card that said Merry Christmas. And it was to our plant manager. He opened it up and everyone's like, what is it? What is it? And he just said nothing. Put the card in his pocket. But what I knew was there, because someone told me, was two Zanny bars taped to the card. I did not know the street value of this gift Maybe it did not exceed the $20 limit. But knowing him 
and his personality. I'm sure he used it and had himself a Merry Christmas. At the plant, we had this young woman who worked there who was about 19 years old. She was engaged, planning her wedding, and looking forward to the future. She was a rapper. She worked in the industry with a bunch of men in a crude, sometimes unforgiving work environment. The person who drew her name was the only other female employee at the plant at the time. She was seasoned, didn't take shit from anybody, large and in charge. Knowing this, we thought it would be a great gift with a woman's touch. She got the present, not knowing who it was from, and opened up the pink bag inside. To reveal a bright purple marital aid of the vibrating variety. Her face turned as pink as the bag, and she was embarrassed and hurt and let down, while the only other female worker at the plant laughed in her face and said, this is for you and your fiancé. She was embarrassed, and there was an utter look of disappointment. Everyone else was laughing. She didn't know what to say, and the other girl took the bag back and said, well, if you're going to be that way about it, I'll just take it. Leaving her with nothing. I was curious about what other people in the industry have gotten on said things, on said occasions. So I asked. And here are the responses. Someone responded, this year I got an eighth of Kush and 64 ounces from a local Amber Brew Ale. Sounds pretty good. Someone wrote, in previous years, I got a live hamster. Which, someone also said they got three live mice. And I am curious... Were these just loose in a bag? Did it come in a cage? Was there a drip system or like one of those little bottle things with the ball in the throat that helps it so you could drink? Set up. What was... Because I would be like apprehensive if just someone handed me a hamster out of their pocket. I would be confused. How did they wrap the gift if it was a white elephant or a secret Santa? Did they just let it run around loose on the gift table? And the three mice. I always feel like a gift should be rewarding. And you never want to receive a chore. Like, oh, sweet. Now I have to go deal with this. I have to go to the pet store and buy food. I have to, you know... Whatever. Someone responded that one year for a secret Santa, they got chlamydia. My response is, was this in, like, here's a napkin of it? Was it dripped? Was it on a, you know, on a slide, a pashmere? Or was this in a personal relations encounter where you failed to wrap up your gift and their gift just kept on giving. Seems like a very personal gift to give away at a company party. Someone said they once received a calendar of co-workers posing particularly nude, sometimes with meat, cuts as props. So, an erotic meat calendar of your favorite co-workers. To put in context, this is the female who sent me this. Now, I would be not that stoked if I received this gift from my coworkers. 
Um, sorry, guys, if you guys are listening to this. And if that's what you're thinking about getting me for next year, I'm glad I just put an end to that right now. I want to know if the pictures coincided with the themes. For July, there was a firework involved. October, a pumpkin. November, some leaves. December, a Santa hat vicariously placed. It being 2018, I'd be lying and remiss if I said that I had never sent the occasional erotic photo. Hopefully the cloud doesn't save everything. I'm not sure if I have the portfolio to fill a whole calendar. Someone responded, a bag of penis-shaped candies. I re-gifted it the following year to the person who got it to me. To which I reply, just shut your eyes and eat the candy. Candy is candy in the dark. Just take it. If it's a gummy, it's going to taste like a gummy in bear form or penis shape. And they, they told me it was lollipop shaped. Then just break it up. And he did his hard candy. Unless it's just not good candy. I can't imagine that the phallus shaped candy makers of the world make the best candy. And the last one I got, continue with the into windows and sexual immaturity and dick jokes, was someone got a penis molding kit from a co worker. Now, if this was a Yankee swapped or a white elephant, what would to ensure that this wouldn't be going to a female? Unless you work with only men. If I were to receive this gift, I would, of course, say thank you. Because thought and energy went into buying it. I just want to know what their intention was. I, if I were to receive this, I certainly when it needed, I don't need a mold of myself. Is it something they were hoping that the person would do and then get back to them? It raises a lot more questions than answers in my mind. I want to know the manufacturers of these gifts and places of erotic stores, what their clientele is like during the holiday month, and what percentage of the products and novelty, quote-unquote, items that are being sold are going for their intended purposes? Or are they just going as the, ha ha, look at this? The comedic side of me wants to say that this is fine and this is fun and all that. Then the ever-growing woke side of me thinks back to how uncomfortable that woman's face was the first holiday party I ever went to in this industry and how I had never wished that upon anybody. The woman who bought her that purple vibrator certainly could have thought it was a joke and it was funny, but her friend didn't. She was embarrassed. She felt like she was the punchline of a joke. And I just want to err on the side of caution. And I think other people should too. To play to your audience and don't play for the cheap laughs. Don't buy a gift card. Don't buy penis shaped things. Buy something that people may think is useful Or like what I have done in the past, something unrememberable, where you don't know what you've given or received. My fallback is usually searching the multi-tool list on Amazon, finding something in that price range, something weird that people could put in their wallet or their glove box, something they may use three times, but when they use it, they may find it useful or that it breaks. And we should stop contributing to the uneaten, unused, novelty penis-shaped items 
given as white elephant gifts. And if you're at your local bar, escaping from your family, looking forward to Christmas Day or reminiscing about Christmas Eve, think about the things you've gotten for people in the past. Merry Christmas, the meat block. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta get back to this rip roaring party. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's episode of the Meat Block Podcast. Hope you like. Hope you liked listening to me ramble for the last twenty five minutes. And I want you to just be safe out there. Uh, call a cab, call an Uber, call a Lyft. Don't drive. Not only because cops are out, but when you drink and drive, you really are just being a dick to humanity. Please be safe. Don't give the gift that keeps on giving. Always wrap your gifts. And if you enjoy this show, even though this episode was very loosely about meat, don't worry, we're going to get back to the meat-related topics. Stop worrying. Please leave us a review on iTunes. Please like, subscribe, and rate us. Please recommend us to a friend. Please support the Butchers of America team by checking out our GoFundMe. If you want to contact David, even though he wasn't on this episode, because he's having half-naked baked cookies. Yes. You could hit him up on a farm butcher on Instagram. You want to get a hold of me, I'm at American Butcher on Instagram and Facebook. You can also email me or David at the Meat Block Podcast at gmail.com. And until next time, keep your knife sharp and live in the margin.